pill for it, I'd be like, Mama, can you taste the food first? She's like, Mm-mm, it needs some salt on it. And I'd be like, <laughs> I think that's a southern thing. She too. didn't even try to taste it. And it's <laughs> add salt to it. So, like I said, going through, so she, she was able to do her knees and okay. have a new replacement in 2016. Okay. So, did you follow that? Yes, ma'am. To have yours? No, ma'am. No. Well, what happened was, um, I started to be conscious because I started getting aches and pains in my knees. And so then when I went to the doctor, then that's when they told me that I do have uh, bone on bone on my knees. Uh, the cartilage is just barely on the ends. And then it is arthritis. And I was like, how did I get arthritis? You know what I mean? But life understanding, because I always thought something traumatic had to happen. But then I forgot when I was younger, I was in a car accident, you know, several car accidents that could have affected, you know what I mean? My, my knee problems. Plus okay. I used to be in uh, gymnastics as well. Okay. So then that's when I said, you know what, I got to, got to do something. So 2016, I had a doctor's appointment because I just wasn't feeling well myself. Um, one day in my daughter's car line in school, I had fell asleep and she was like, mommy go. And I was like, what do you mean go? I'm, she was like, mommy, wake up, wake up. And I'm like, what do you mean wake up? She was like, mommy, you fell asleep. I said, I didn't fall asleep. She's like, yes, you did. I said, so we up here debating in the car. <laughs> so long story short, I had a doctor's appointment that day because I just, you know what I mean? I was, didn't have energy or anything like that. And what I found out is my doctor said, there's nothing wrong with you except you're morbidly obese. And I was like, who's she talking? I got a little offended mm -hmm. now. I have a love, I love my doctor. And she was like, um, you're a perfect candidate. I said, okay, for what? She said, a gastric bypass. She could have slapped me in my face when she said that mm. because I was like, I don't, I don't need that. So when you have scales at home that only go up to like 450 mm -hmm. pounds, 500 pounds, mm -hmm. and you just, you know what I mean? They talking to you, but they not talking to you because you can't go any further. So you did, I didn't know how much I weigh. So I you were in total denial. Yes, ma'am. So I went on out there to uh, Lutheran Hospital where they they have the procedure because okay. what people don't understand, you have to have a year evaluation, a psychological evaluation before you can before get before you could have gastric bypass. So she said, "I'm not making you do anything. I just want you to go out there and hear what they're speaking." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they had people who were talking about it. And, you know, the first thing they said that they're going to, you know, cut your stomach and then make it like a size of a quarter. And I was like, that's what? not the problem. And I said, you know, and, and I, I have but no when they Wait a minute. But when they make it the size of a quarter, is it going to grow back? It can to it, grow to, back. To the regular size? Yes, ma'am. Or is it, it going to stay the it, size? It can, it can grow back. Because you, it can be stretched. It's a month. It's a. It can be stretched right back if yeah, you yeah. don't properly perceive with that. With doing the year evaluation, it's supposed to be getting your mental, because oh. you mentally eat. You your stomach ain't got. You know your stomach can growl, but you're the one who puts in. You know what I mean. You're, but you're putting so, in. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, man, a size because you know she the lady did it with her hand, the little circle, and then she said for six months you're going to be eating liquids. And I was like, this is March. <laughs> nine, three, nine, six. Thanksgiving going to be coming around. And I, and anybody, everybody know me and my family. I do not play around because we do like a potluck or something. Everybody. So if something is missing, I am the one that goes finds the store to make sure <laughs> I have right there. all the ingredients oh, wow. for the perfect <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. So, you know, and I was just like. I, you know how you sometimes you have to talk to yourself. I'm like, how am I? There's no way I'm gonna do this because it's not my stomach who's going. To, it's just like now. I'm thinking of Thanksgiving, and today is November. I'm thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can't get it together with you doing something to my stomach because yeah. it's up here, and by then, like I said, she was like, I just so then I weighed myself. That scale told me I weighed five hundred and ninety nine pounds. This is at the doctor's office. This is at the gastric because that scale goes all the way up to okay. who knows what okay. what it goes to, and I could not believe that. I was like, "How in the world did that happen?" Because you weren't short of breath, no, ma'am. You were still very active. But what what I found out, my normalcy was park here, go in here. There's a seat here. My daughter would go in like because I she, I was a dance mom. So okay. I would go okay. to the competitions early, be the first mom there, side closest parking spot. My normalcy, I incorporated 
my limitation oh. where I knew if I parked this here, I could go here or I had a handicap sticker too. So I can park in the handicap spot is always the closest. Okay. And then just, you know, a short distance, um, going to the store, my, my, I hate, I hate to shop and that didn't even have anything to do with my, but we would go in, get what we need. And then, you know what I mean? Come on out. So what I incorporated my life with my limitations. Okay. okay. So it wasn't going to be to the mall or, I mean, not walk at a mile, go to the mall, you know, where to see, you know, go to sit down. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? When I get tired or my knees will start hurting. And then, um, I don't know. I, I know I talked to you about this when we, we talked on the phone for this, for the pre-interview that we look at ourselves and we, and we say, Oh, well, I'm big boned anyway. So that's just how, that's just my family. You know, that's how all the women in my family look. Right. And right. so, you know, that's okay. I'm just going to eat a little bit. That's just how we look. Right. And, but when I said that you educated me and I still think about that, what can you, you know please what? share what yes, you said? Ma'am. We are told we are big boned. I've been told that my entire life, mm-hmm. big boned. And my doctor told me, when have you ever seen a big boned skeleton? Uh, you know, it is something you had. To, I was like, oh, no, she, no, she. And I had to, I have never seen a big bonus skeleton. Okay. And what's funny is I actually looked one up and it showed, it was a, a meme, but it showed there's no such thing as a big bonus skeleton. Then where do we get that concept from? I think we were told. Because there's some big women now. And when I lived in Fort Wayne, and when I say big, I don't mean it. I'm um, fat. I mean, tall mm-hmm. and and thick mm-hmm. and um, the bone structure. So you're telling me, and I would like to talk to your doctor. That's not the bone structure. <laughs> that well, you know, muscle mass what? because okay. we still have you know muscles and you know, and I think that probably has something to do back how we got here. You know, okay. as African American people. Okay. You know what I mean? But muscle wise, yes, we can't have more muscle. You know what I mean? Because you can have people who weigh the same weight. And if you put them all in a line, they all look different okay. according to, you know, their muscle, you know, muscle structure. But as far as the bone, unfortunately, the bones, the skeleton is still the yeah. skeleton. There ain't no big bone in the skeleton. You definitely <laughs> educated me. I was like, ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no big bone did. All right. So she said, that's not true. Correct. It's how you're eating. It's your your um, you have adjusted your lifestyle to accommodate correct yourself. Correct. What was the next step? So the next step was to really get honest and and and, um, and real with myself. So I had one of my my closest friends. Um, I didn't know at the time. He was like, "Let's go walk," and I was like, "Okay." So it, it we went to McMillan Park and literally. I would say if you wanted to measure it, it was probably less than a half a block. I couldn't even walk a half a block. Ooh. And so he was like, what's going on with you? He said, how are you? And I was like, I'm fine. He said, that's what you're used to telling everybody. He said, but what is going on with you? And then I immediately started to cry because at that moment I realized I had put everybody before, before me. And then I had my daughter at the time. She was, 11 years old 11 12 and she said mommy it's okay to cry Mm. and I said what do you mean she's like it's okay to cry for papa and I was like (laughs) I'm I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine and this is this was I was teaching her how to cope with grieving is to hide it and there's nothing wrong with grieving there's and there's no time limit on grieving I know but when you internalize it is the problem and that's what I was doing my coping mechanism to grieve for my father was through food. And you were tearing your body down. And I was tearing my body down, especially my knees. And Mm -hmm. like I said, to continue on that path. And like I said, when I couldn't even walk a half a block, and I said, what if I needed to walk seriously? And then that's when I started to look. You know, my job, you know, I could walk here, walk here, life, everything. Yeah. It was where, where was the chair? So I could sit down. And then get, you know what I mean? Then get adjusted and then continue on. And I was like, <clears throat> excuse me, that's no way to live. Mm-hmm. So, so then honey, that's how much I... you weigh, how much have you lost now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm approaching, I'm, a, I'm approaching the 400 threshold. So I'm 419 now. Wow. Congratulations. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So, wow. Yes, ma'am. Now, what's next on this journey? Keep on. Keep on. And now I'm, I've been 
somebody has said something to me and I, I got offended when they said this. They said, Coco, if you weren't who you were, you would have lose you would lose weight. And what I does was that like, mean? and I, I said, Well, what do you mean by that? He said, Because you're confident with your weight. No matter he said, because he saw me when I was smaller ah. and saw when I was bigger. And I was like, but I got offended. I was like, hold up. And so then I was like, you know what? What he's saying is, is he, it was the way I was raised. There's no my, shame so many, in your game. Exactly. That's my what mama, he's saying. My mom and daddy did a very okay. good job. You are who you are, but right. you could dress it up. You could do what, you know what I mean? It's right. into, I love myself. Right, right, So right. I said, you know what? Maybe I can change people's thinking about, hey, you know what I mean? Let me show people. Let's just start walking. You know, Martin Luther King talks to Dr. Martin Luther King's if you can't crawl, you you know, walk, walk, you know. Right, you, right. So I was like, so I had consciously started to look at my steps. I would only do 1,500 steps a day. And that was that was my normalcy from going to work. I thought I was exercising, you know, by walking. But I was only doing some days 800 steps. So I consciously, so then I started walking, consciously looking at my steps. Okay. And increasing my steps daily. And then, like I said... But uh, were you taking anything from so, Total Life Changes while you're doing this? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. I was, of course, detox my body Okay. Um, with the, the, the detox tea that they had. Um, I didn't realize that people don't eliminate waste every day. And so it amazed me when I came a part of, of Total Life Changes that some people don't use the bathroom. I was raised every time you eat, you should you eliminate waste. There's mm-hmm. people who don't even do that. And so, I've heard some people say that... Um, women actually go more than men. Mm-hmm. Is it? And and I, I can't remember who shared that, but there's research that says that mm-hmm. that women will go um, two, three, four times a day. Right. When men don't go as as often. I well, don't know if there's ugh, any truth. I don't in that. know. But like I said, my mama, dad. I can remember when I was younger. He told my dad I didn't want to use the bathroom no more, and he told me how important the there was a book, a cartoon book when when the the the, the bottom part of the body closed up, the ears and the, everything, and the, how the body smelled, and, and so it was a, always a part of that. You you know you eat you boo boo. You know what I mean? Like right. I said, two or three times. But this is where people have, need to have a real conversation with yourself. Yeah. You need to eliminate waste. That is toxins in your body. So if you don't eliminate it, so me thinking who I am, I boo boo all the time. So I'm not going to have anything in me. I said, let me let me see with this five 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 days. So the first time I did the detox, I lost over thirty pounds in five days. Just from the tea. Just Girl, from I'm gonna need the some of that tea. tea. <laughs> Just from that tea alone. And I was like, but I'm a person who uses the bathroom regularly. I don't wow. have a problem. So then I was like, what, what, what's in me then that's causing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. So then I said, okay, let me, and then that's when I had with the tea because it'll eventually start taking out the nutritional, the, the, the good stuff in your body. You have to replace it with. So then that's when I started with the Nutriburst, uh, uh, a multivitamin because I don't play around, you know, I, some of y'all know what Father John was. That's the type of mother oh, I yes. have. My my seventeen year old child even knows about Father John. So <laughs> my son knows about Father John. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was my dad. <laughs> so we didn't religiously. <laughs> okay, you'd be like, no, I'm good. I'm I'm not sick at all. So you better go get some Father John. <laughs> go get me that spoon. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, I always was conscious about oh, wow. multivitamins and stuff like that. So then they came out what's called the resolution drops. It is like the slogan of a gastric bypass in a bottle. And I was like... You, you guys carry that? Resolution so, drop. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Uh, with it, you're supposed to limit yourself a 1,200 calorie diet. I was like, okay, we're going to see about this. <laughs> what it did what it did for me, though, is what it, whatever I crave, it gave me a slight upset stomach. So I can remember one. So that you didn't want it? It did. So you don't want it. It suppresses and, and it suppresses your appetite. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say I followed the guidelines. But what I did was consistently take the tea, the Nutriburst, and the Resolution Drops. Within 10 months, I had lost 120 pounds just by doing that. But what it also did for me, because they have products for you that help with your knees, yeah. uh, Chaga and Stem Sense, it was starting to gain my mobility and I was starting to walk more because I wasn't in pain. Wow. So, and you know, and what people need to realize is, yeah, somebody, you know, just because a certain person is a certain type, a certain size, you know, it's not that they're lazy, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or anything like that. 
whatever you have to get what's inside is causing the problem. And like I said, when she was talking about gastric bypass, I was like, well, it was a pivotal moment for myself then because I was like, that's not the problem. What is the problem? And then also there are certain people just because you're, you are heavy doesn't mean you're unhealthy. Correct. There are some small people that are very unhealthy. So it's not about just the physical size. That correct. You see. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And so, uh, and then that's when, you know, that I had started the thing about, you know, what happens when a plane is going down? What do they tell you to do first? Mm, and the mask on yourself first. Correct. Because then I realized I have someone looking at me. Okay. Always not putting the mask on myself, okay. but securing everybody else. And then I'm up with no, you know, not to be, you know, making fun of it or and being lighthearted about it. But then I had to evaluate that because when she saw a picture of me prior to having her, she was like, mommy, who's this? And I said, that's me. I could see in her mind, mom, did I cause my mama to be this size? No. Because she, I could see that's what she was. She was like, well, mommy, was you, what, did I cause you? And I didn't want her to hold that guilt that it was because of having her. And, you know, like I said, she just requited, this is my mommy before me. This mm -hmm. is mommy now after me. So by putting yourself first and making myself a priority and my plate is still full, mm -hmm. but I've learned I can make a thousand excuses mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. to do something and, 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 and making myself a priority. One thing I did have to do, <clears throat> it was hard, was get rid of Pepsi. And I would, I, if you look at my you social don't drink media, no Pepsi? I, I, I don't drink <laughs> Pepsi like I used to now. Okay. Now Thanksgiving, trust and believe. <laughs> <laughs> you will have at least I'm one liter. I'm going to have maybe not a liter, maybe a half though. But you know what? You know you have to be conscious right. about right. what you you know what I mean, what I did. So, right. you know, people laugh at me. I was said I had to go commit myself to Pepsi Anonymous because girl, <laughs> I'm telling you, them Pepsi's mm them Pepsi see how mm <laughs> Yeah, the quench of dirt got me salivating right now thinking about. But you know what? This is where conversation needs to be real. Right, about. right. And like I said, and then getting my wellness checks, I used to make people so mad. The nurses mad because they would make, you know, try to make that blood pressure cup go higher. they like, how do you not have blood pressure? You know, high blood pressure. I said, just because you did don't mean you have to right. have high blood pressure. Because right. I was conscious about, you know, I'm a hot sauce person. I don't do a lot of... Uh, um, Sauce, you mm -hmm. know, my food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I said that was one thing that I was conscious because I did not want to develop, you know, seeing my mom and dad, you know, do high blood, you know, have high blood pressure and high cholesterol. So I was conscious about that. But the only thing I didn't get too conscious was about the, the weight. So back to 2016, my doctor told me she was like one of the problems I was anemic. So during a certain times of the month for myself, I didn't have anything and that's what was causing me to become so, so weak. So I had to bring my body back into what's called balance. So TLC has a product that's TLC short for total life change. It's called to chewy. It's a hundred percent spirilla. And it, so it brought me that I was no longer being anemic. So then that stopped me from, you know what I mean? Falling asleep where somebody said I was falling asleep, but I don't think I was. But. <laughs> and I think you, what, I, what I'm hearing and I've heard before is it is really a total life change. It's not just, Correct. okay, I'm going to go exercise. I'm going to exercise, but I'm going to eat right, but I'm going to take this because it's going to flush me out. And um, so that's a, a really, a really good thing. So now when you talk about your health, I can hear it, but tell us, what is your health? What is your health worth? It is, it's priceless uh -huh. because going to round to these college visits with my daughter yes. and, and having to walk and knowing where before that would have uh -huh. not happened and, and being able to take it in with her, um, that's priceless to be able to just, you know, you take for granted a lot of things. Even, you know, there was a time I can remember coming to this library. I was like, I would find the closest parking spot and there's no close par parking spot mm -mm. to come into this library. So I wouldn't come to this library no. <laughs> only when I had to come to this life. You know what I mean? It's just taking, it's making me reappreciate things that everyday people take for granted. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Especially when somebody, you could tell when somebody's in pain, especially the way, one the way they walk and if they're standing, how they shift their body. 
And then when you see the beads of sweat coming, that means that person is in pain while they're standing there. And I, I know how that feels because that was one time me and I would be like, look at let me find a chair. Now, not to say that if I stand for two hours, that may not happen. Mm -hmm. But understanding, you know, that is a part where we have to be conscious of continuing on this lifestyle journey. Because like I said before, if somebody would ask me, let's go run a mile, you know, back in the day, I had no problem going around Foster Park two and three times. Let's, let's go. But you run about, "Mm, okay. okay. I'm going to go halfway. (laughs) Okay. Because my knees would hurt so bad. Right, right. So like I said, you know, then like I said, being on what's called chaga and stem sense of another total life change. And then being consciously aware of what I eat because um, there's something about uh, wine, Moscato. Wine. Oh, yeah. I can't. It goes straight to my knees. I can feel it the moment I take it. The pain comes. So you know what I mean? Making small steps. Really? Yes, ma'am. Being conscious of what I eat. I do limit um, I just pretty much eat chicken. Um, unfortunately, my daughter has a fish allergy, so I don't eat fish because of her. But being conscious more, my doctor asked, she said, why don't you just increase your, your vegetables? She said, I don't, don't even don't even call it, and I don't call it a diet. It's just I'm consciously aware. But if there is something that I want, like on Thursday, November 28th, <laughs> <laughs> Trust to believe, I will have my ham, my greens, my mac and cheese. My cheesecake. I'm going to have it. My sweet potato pie. But even at that, and one thing that I also had to learn as an adult, I don't have to eat all my food on my plate. Now, you know what? When you said that to me, that that was really um, instrumental. When you said we 